One of the most important decisions to make when building a DCC layout is selecting the correct command station that will work for you. Roll the credits. As one of the most expensive parts of building a model railway, selecting the correct command station that not only fulfills your needs now, but allows for you to grow as the layout develops. Despite several manufacturers making starter sets with low power between 1 and 2 amps, I feel that even for a board layout, this very quickly could prove to be insufficient Simply running a couple of locos with sound and lights and having coaches with lighting, it is very easy to exceed these, the available power and end up causing it to trip out. It is always a good practice to have a certain amount of headroom above what you are using to allow for any unexpected demands. Even on a board layout, if finances allow, I would still recommend a 3.5 amp supply as this will provide a reliable service. For a room layout, 3.5 amps I would consider an absolute minimum. The starter sets will more than likely be more than sufficient power if you are using a N-Scale or Hornby TT120 as their power needs are much less. Having the ability to add a booster or boosters as required is always useful, particularly on the larger layouts. However, it is possible to add a booster independently of the system. It is just more convenient to add it to your existing command station. As the protocols control in DCC are being constantly updated, it is very useful to be able to connect your command station to the internet via USB to be able to update the software to take accommodations for this. It is also useful, should you wish at a future time, to be able to connect to your computer to allow software to drive your trains should you wish to add that facility in the future. During the 1990s, people were looking for ways of being able to control model trains other than DC. Lens, in 1995, invented what is now DCC and was adopted by the NMRA as their standard system. This is a global standard, so every company in the world ensure that all products using the DCC protocol conform to this global standard. The only two command stations, to the best of my knowledge, that do not comply are the Hornby Select and the Hornby E-Link using Railmaster software. What is the significance of this? What it means is that when you are trying to drive a loco, for example, either the train will not drive properly and or the functions will not work properly. This was my experience when I owned Railmaster. I was using a Hatton's chip, which works perfectly on a Digitrax system, but did not work properly on E-Link. As this was some time ago, it could be that Hornby have at long last updated their software, but one would have to check. I purchased the E-Link and Railmaster software as part of a train set to get me started back in 2019 and subsequently ended up getting it returned for a full refund. I will be doing a video on the perils of buying a train set to get started as a future video. My advice would be avoid these two products. The Hornby Elite at £326 is NMRA compliant but typical of Hornby they don't actually specify so on their website although I do believe it is. At the time of recording it was available at Cheltenham Model Railway Centre at £261. I am not sure whether it includes the power supply or not. I would check. Despite being quite dated, it is a dual system so you can drive two trains at the same time and may well be suitable for somebody with a board layout.
It didn't meet my requirements because it does not support feedback. There are quite a few YouTube owners that use this system and seem to be quite happy with it. Backman have two offerings, the Dynamis, which is a modular system that can support multiple handsets, but its drawback is that the handsets utilise infrared rather than Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and it does not support feedback. I'm not sure whether it's still available, but it is being replaced by the Kinesis system, which is a similar system, but more modern and it is working on Wi-Fi rather than infrared but it is being supplied with only a 2 amp supply if you want more you have to pay to have an extra power supply it's got an RRP of 399 but it appears as at the date of this video it is not yet available it's coming soon to me it looks an interesting system, but they've, in my opinion, missed out by not providing feedback. NCE have two stroke three options. The power cab, which we have talked about previously, only has a power output of 1.5 to 2 amps, but is competitively priced at £209. Their Power Pro 5 amp system has an eye-watering price tag of £599, but it still does not support any feedback, so I find it very hard to justify that at that price. I believe there is also a Wi-Fi version available of this system at a higher price still. The third option comes as an adaptation by DCC Concepts, the Aegis system, which upgrades the power cab to have a 5 amp supply and also converts it to Wi-Fi. That comes in at £699. That does include the power cab. I feel that DCC Concepts have missed out here creating this by again not including any facility for feedback but because this is a modular system it could be coming later i don't know but it is still expensive for what you're getting gauge master have two options with variations on both the first one being the gauge master prodigy express which is priced at 295 pounds which is a basic system and only has an output of up to two amps this is fine for small layouts operating TT120 or N scale. For 00 or HO, this could be a problem in the future. Gauge Master's main system is the Prejudy Advance 2, priced at £495 for a 3.5 amp system. There is also a Wi Fi version available and an option for both the Express and Advance 2 to be upgraded to Wi-Fi should it be required at a later date. Both systems are lacking feedback. However, this is still a very popular system and is basically a very good system. It is reliable and does what it says on the can. But, in my opinion, a little expensive and lacking in features. Gauge Master have also introduced the Infinity Range. A DCC version at £425 is available, but still lacks feedback. So why do I think that all systems should have the option for feedback? It's quite simple. It allows the system to be operated as well as by manual by the operator. It also facilitates to be operated via the computer. Going forward, people coming into the hobby are much more tech savvy and computer literate, so are comfortable with using smart devices and computers. By adding computer control, it doesn't take anything away from operating the system manually, but increases the enjoyability by adding so much more. We'll be bringing out in the very near future a video showing what by computerising brings extra to the hobby. Please subscribe and add to the notification bell so that you see this video as and when it comes out. All of the following videos do support feedback and being connected to a computer. Broco have the Z21 which is available in three versions. The first one being the black version which is included the Wi-Fi and no handset. It is operated via 
the Z21 app available on both Android and iOS but should you wish to add a handset at a later date you can. This is an extremely popular version and it is the system actually controlling the Pete Waterman making tracks layouts. It is priced at approximately £440 depending on where you buy it. There is also a professional version priced at £580 which also includes Roco's handset. There is the white system which is part of the Roco train sets but is only available second hand through things like eBay or Facebook and is a very much cut down version. ESU have two offerings. The 50210 ECOS 2.1 is a dual channel system with a touch screen. This has been around a little while but is an extremely good and powerful and versatile. It does have a couple of drawbacks. A, it being nearly £650 which is a little bit on the pricey side but it does a really good job. The other minor issue with it which is nothing to do with ECOS themselves is the fact that it uses a touch screen and that is very susceptible to failing in extremely cold conditions. The other system they have is a cab control system with a maximum output of 7 amps. As this is a Wi-Fi system it does offer great flexibility. It also does support feedback as does the 5210. Both are good solid systems and deserve a look. Digitrack's entry offering is a Zephyr which is a 3 amp power supply costing £200. Although basic it does offer the ability to connect via USB to a computer and of course it has loco net so it can be used with hand throttle. For a small layer it is a good option at the price. This is in fact the system that is being used by Steve and TT120 who is helping me build my layer and he is very happy with it. The Evolution Express is their main system costing £382 and includes a 5 amp power supply. It also includes a dual hand throttle the 602, their latest version, which is extremely good. This is a good all-round versatile system and it is a, a serious contender. The Evolution Express Duplex is their Wi-Fi version and comes in at £545. The Digitrack's own versions of the feedback and accessory decoders are good but expensive. The compatibility with the Yamak LocoNet versions which are totally compatible and at a significantly lower price makes this a good system to consider. The Yamak YD7010 which is a 3 amp system coming in at £249.95 plus £39.90 for the power supply is one of the most versatile systems out there. It is the direct replacement Digitrax DR5000. It has a built-in Wi-Fi but no hand controller so you can use the Z21 app that has to be paid for to control your trains. It also has a USB interface so it works with a computer through its own software. There are also a number of free apps that can drive your locos which are free which are also fully compatible with the system. It is also possible when required to add a handset at extra cost using either the LocoNet or ExpressNet system. The Yamak system provides two feedback options either using LocoNet or S88 or indeed a combination of both so it is extremely cost effective. In conclusion if I was having to make the decision today I would be choosing between either the Digitrack Evolution with the handset or the Yamak which could be controlled either from the computer and or a app. I actually own a DigiKeys DR5000 
which is the predecessor to the Yamaha. The reason I didn't go for the Digitrax at the time was that the handset that was included was the old one, which I didn't like, and it did not include built-in USB. You had to buy that as a separate add-on. So the DR5000 was good for me, and I've been very happy with it. If I was having to make the decision today, I would probably go with the Digitrax system, including the handset. Realistically, you pays your money and takes your choice. Either you like the Digitrax because it's got the handset, or the Yamak, which includes uh, ability to work with smartphones directly and or the computer, and add a handset at a later stage if required.